Okay, so I am going to talk myself through this free response question. Uh, this is the one that we need to be prepared for for Friday's quiz or test. So let's look at it. It says on a certain work day, the rate in tons per hour, which unprocessed gravel arrives at a processing plant, is modeled by that equation. So before I go any further, let's talk about it. The rate, it's in tons per hour, unprocessed gravel arrives is given by this equation. So it's a rate, it's when gravel arrives at the place where T is measured from 0 to 8. At the beginning of the workday, the plant has 500 tons of unprocessed gravel. So at the beginning of the workday, or in other words, this right here, when T equals 0, that is going to be my starting amount. That's how much I have to start the day. This is a rate, and it's what's arriving there. <clears throat> During the hours of operation, the plant processes gravel at a constant rate of 100 tons per hour. So if we are doing it at that rate, that means 100 tons per hour is the rate that stuff is leaving because you're processing the gravel. You've got, understand what's happening. You've got this pile of gravel. The first rate that G of T is the rate where they're adding more gravel to this heap. The rate over here, this 100 tons per hour, let's call it L of T, just that way we have something. The amount leaving is 100. And so it is leaving at this L of T equation. So understanding gravel's coming, gravel is leaving, and we started with 500 tons to begin the day. So part A says, find G prime at 5. That question's pretty easy. They gave me G. I want to find G prime at 5. I've been doing a calculator question, so I'm going to type that in. So I already hit Y1. I typed in that equation. If I want to find G prime at 5, I go math 8. So remember, math 8 is numerical derivative. Math 8 dx of that function. So I'm going to go alpha F4. That way I can pick that Y1 equation. And I'm going to make my x value equal, uh, was it 4? No, I just forgot. Uh, 5, sorry, g prime at 5. So I'm going to go back here and type in 5. I hit enter. There is that idea, negative 24.588. Negative 24.588. There's no other work that I need to show. That's it. Since it was finding the derivative and it was with our calculator, I just typed it straight into my calculator. With correct units. So we just integrated this rate. These units before were tons per hour. So it was tons per hour, but I just found the derivative of it. So remember, if you found the derivative, you are finding it tons per hour per hour or tons per hour squared. To me, this is the toughest point on, the, on this part of the question, but it asks you to interpret your answer in context of the problem. So what we just found is the rate gravel is arriving. I spelled arriving wrong? No? Nope. Okay. Is decreasing. Why is it decreasing? Because it was a negative rate. My rate was negative. Therefore, when I took the derivative, it is decreasing by... 24.588 tons per hour squared at time equals 5. Remember, when you take a derivative, that is going to be at a time, not over a time period, but at a specific time. So part A, the first part was easy. The second point may be a little bit tougher. The stuff in red there where we interpreted. Part B, ask you to find the total amount of unprocessed gravel that arrives. It's not saying how much is on the pile, but how much arrives during the hours of operation. And so what we're going to do to find the total amount of unprocessed gravel, we are going to integrate over the time period. So the day went from 0 to 8 hours. And we're going to find out the unprocessed gravel that arrives. So this is the rate that it arrives. So if I want to know how much gravel there was, we integrated. So from 0 to 8, 
we are integrating g of t dt. You scored one point if you have this integral, and then you got another point for finding the numerical answer. So all I had to do was go math eight. I'm sorry, math nine from zero to eight. G of t. So that was saved under y one. D t. Hit enter. Eight hundred twenty five point five five one, and that's going to be tons. Oops. Let's try that again. Eight hundred and 25.551 tons. Part C. Part C asks, is the amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant increasing or decreasing at time t equals 5? Show your work. And so we are trying to figure out, is this pile right here getting bigger or smaller at t equals 5? Well, two things are happening. You are adding to it and you're taking away. And so what we need to do to figure out if you're getting bigger or less at your pile, for part C, we want to compare G of T versus L of T, the amount leaving. Well, the amount leaving is 100 tons per hour. And so my job is to just figure out which number is bigger. If this number is bigger, it's decreasing because you're subtracting more. If this number is bigger, then you're increasing because you're getting more gravel on the pile. And we're trying to figure this out at time t equals 5. So I want to find g at 5 and figure out what that is compared to 100. I can find g of 5 really easily. That is just plugging 5 into this equation because this was a g equation. This will tell me the rate. And so to do that in my calculator, there's lots of different ways. I could graph it and find the value. Uh, the best way for me to do it is alpha F4, Y1, and I'm going to put in parentheses 5. So what that's doing is it's plugging 5 in for my X value on that equation that I typed in. I got 98.141. So G of 5 was 98.141, and I'm comparing that to 100. Well, is 98 bigger or less than 100? 98 is less than 100. So this is what's going in to the pile. This is what's coming out of the pile. Since there's more coming out, the question was, the question was, is the amount of unprocessed gravel increasing or decreasing? The gravel is decreasing. Is decreasing because the gravel arriving, the rate of gravel arriving is less than amount processed than gravel rate processed at t equals 5. I could probably put that in a little bit better, but that's the main idea there. So the pile is decreasing during that amount because more is coming out than going in. All those are good. Part D is the, the most uh, important question. It's going to be the one worth the most points. On my last one, you got one point if you compared these two things, and then you got one point for your answer. Last one says, what is the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel? So we are finding a maximum. What is the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel at the plant during the hours of operation? So how do you find a maximum? And again, we're going to justify this answer in the end. How do you find a maximum? Well, maximums can occur. We're finding a maximum value. Anytime we're justifying a maximum, I'm going to set up an equation like this. T versus gravel. So when can... When can you have a maximum? Maximums can happen at endpoints. So you could have more gravel at the start of the day at time t equals zero. You could have more gravel at the end of the day when t equals eight. Or the other place that you could have gravel, have a maximum amount of gravel, is when g, when your rate it has a critical point. So this is about when is the flow of your gravel going to have a critical point. Here's what we need to find out. Gravel rate in pile 
of pile. The gravel rate of your pile can give it be given by this equation. G of T minus 100. This is the rate where it's coming in. This is the rate that it's going out. And so that right there will tell you the amount of the rate of gravel of the pile in general. So let's graph that real quick. So I'm going to graph that. I'm going to do it a little bit differently maybe just because I don't want to erase that equation that I had. Yeah, let's just put it on there. So I'm taking this equation. Everything about this equation is the same. The only difference now is I'm going to subtract 100. I'm going to take away the gravel. If I were to graph that, that is not the right window for me. Let me adjust my window a little bit. Mm. Let's go from negative 50 to 50. I really don't need to see everything. Oh, and I didn't change my window. I only want from 0 to 8. That was from 0 to 10. So let me adjust that. There's only one time that really matters here. You've got this spot right here in the middle. All right. Here you're going to have more gravel entering because your gra rate is positive, and then here your rate is going to become negative, and so the gravel is going to be leaving the pile. This spot, spot right there is when the gravel hits a maximum. Why does it hit a maximum there? Because the rate changes from positive to negative, and so we just need to find that spot right there. So I'm going to go second calculate the zero. I'm going to move my cursor to the left side, hit enter, and I'm going to move my cursor to the right side of that intersection spot and hit enter, hit enter, there is my zero at 4.923. So I wanted to figure out when this was equal to zero, and we found that at time equals 4.923. That is the other time that I could have a maximum. They could happen at endpoints, and it could happen at critical points. I just found the critical point. How much gravel is in the pile at time zero? Well, that was at the start of the day. It told us that up above. The amount of gravel was 500 at the start of the day. Is that right? I got to double check. Mm, yeah, 500 tons. Okay, now I want to figure out how much gravel is at 4.923. Well, how do I figure out the amount of gravel? You would want to start with that 500. That's how much we started with. We're going to add to that the change. So the change is the integration starting at zero and going until some time of that g of t minus 100 equation. So this is going to be the change. I could integrate to lots of different numbers. I didn't put a number up there. I just made it x. So for the first one, to figure out how much is at this time, for x right there, I'm going to plug in that value. So let's type that in now. So in my calculator, second quit, 500 plus the integration, math, 9. I'm going from 0, no, double 0, that's weird, to that number. I just calculated that in my calculator, so I'm going to go, um, what was that decimal? It was 4.92348. I really don't want to round it. That was the answer. I should have saved it probably earlier, but I had it written down, so I just typed that in. Of that equation, and so I'm going to go alpha F1. Remember, that equation now has both g of t and the minus 100 built into it. dx, I hit enter. That is how much gravel is in the pile at time 4.923. So 635.376. That's the amount of gravel. Now I want to figure out at 8. And so we're doing the exact same equation. The only difference between this equation and what we just did is instead of that weird decimal up there, I want to integrate that thing to 8. So I want to know how much gravel is there at 8 hours. At 8 hours, it's 525.551. So what is the, the whole question was, what is the maximum amount of unprocessed gravel? So looking at those numbers, which of those numbers is the biggest? This guy right here. That is the maximum amount of gravel. It started less than that. At the end of the day, we had less than that as well. But at 4.9 hours is when it became the greatest. That last question, you got one point if you looked for the zero. So if you set something up like that and set it equal to zero, you scored a point. You scored one point 
if you have this justification. So if you have this table set up, you scored a point and you got one point for that final answer. That is not the world's easiest question, but uh, it's a good question and one that's going to pop up every single AP exam. To me, this is the difference between uh, you getting a three or a four on the AP exam and maybe a four or a five, just depending on where you're at. Hopefully that helps. Be ready for your test.